what's up? This is Jake here in Jake's shop. I've got my buddy's 1969 Camaro in the shop today, and I'm going to do a little project with it. We've got a roll cage to weld in it. Now, I've done a few roll cages to a few of my other cars. I've never actually got to do a roll cage in Crow Molly before, so this will be my first Crow Molly cage. Through this video, I'll kind of show you some tips and tricks, at least what I've done in the past. I'll probably give some information there on different dimensions for some of the piping and tubing and, and what's required for this particular type of racing he's going to do. But you're always, if you're going to attempt to do something like this on your own, you're going to want to make sure you have a really good welding skills, you're confident in your welding skills, and that you check with your local clubs and, and, and sanctions and whatever class your car is in. This particular car is a unibody car, meaning it doesn't, it's not a full frame car, right? It's got a front subframe, the rear subframe's kind of integrated into it. So there's a few key things we'll go into and I'll show you what that's about. Okay, so for the type of racing that this car is going to be into, it's going to require a six point cage. Now there's a couple things that, you know, determining where things go and, and how to make it happen and make everything still work is tricky, right? So we've got a back seat that normally is in here and this car will have a back seat. This isn't a linked car, it's, it's, it's not gonna be crazy you know, six second car or anything right now. So determining exactly where the main hoop is is the first thing I'm going to do. Now to do that, the first thing is on a unibody car is you have to weld plates onto the floor. Now I've started the process here. There's gonna be another plate over there. Now to figure out the location of the plate, because I wanted to retain the back seat, I had the back seat in here and I'm, and I'm trying to figure out roughly where that bar needs to be. The plate's pretty wide, so I marked the location of where I wanted the plate to be now try and hopefully not destroy the camera. Now what you have to do after I figure out the location, there's this seam right here where these two panels of the rocker were sealed together from the factory. Uh, they're spot welded. They just come up and lip up and, and they're butted together. Now I had to obviously cut that out to get this plate nice and flat on this floor. After I cut it out, you can see I'm starting to weld this back in. This is a really tricky weld because it's just two really light pieces of metal that are butted up together and after you cut this out, there's a pretty good gap here. But I wanna fill that gap, something that you would never see, but I just wanna make sure there's a ton of structure retained in here. So I went ahead and did this side or started the process with this side just to kind of show it. The other side, I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'm not gonna bother videoing the whole thing because on a unibody car, you're going to have to use these plates. These plates need to be welded where the bar goes to the floor. If it had a frame, you're supposed to go and I believe actually hook into the frame, but I've never done that because I've never done a full frame car before. I like welding the plates down. They say you can through bolt them as well. I don't like that. Welding's way better um, and it's, it's gonna look a lot cleaner. You can put a carpet around it and, and hide everything really well. Now the next problem is after you've got this cut and I'm gonna weld and grind this nice and smooth, finish marking this out, is you've got a flat plate. Now the flat plate is obviously not going to fit that octagonal rocker, right? So what I did was I put the plate in, I made a couple marks, and I've relief cut this piece of steel. This is eighth inch, I think, steel. And I went ahead and bent it after I made my mark. So I relief cut it and I went ahead and bent it. Now, obviously those aren't going to stay there. I'm gonna weld those solid and shut after I get this all ground out and I get this place, plate nice and welded into place. That's the first step because before I can determine the height the bar needs to be to get proper clearance for the top of the car and the driver's head, I believe it's six inches, it needs to be to the top of the helmet. And also from the back of the helmet, you can't be too far back. I am probably gonna take that bar and I probably will kick it back just a little bit at an angle. We'll see how it fits, but again, first things first, I just wanna get these plates in position, then I can start looking at the main hoop, roughly where it's going, and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so I have Caden in here helping me, checking out my work, but I thought I'd show a little bit of the next final product here after I've got that rear plate welded into place. Uh, it turned out good. It's in there. Camera focus. You know, it's really tricky when you're welding these to get to not, you know, try not get too much porosity in these welds because there's sealer inside here. So I dug a bunch of that sealer out and tried to clean it as best as I can. That is a very solid, solid weld. It's not gonna really wanna focus for me. But anyways, um, so yeah, the rear plate's in. I'm gonna do the front plate next. And I basically did the same thing. Now this one was a lot more difficult because these plates have to be, I believe it's six by six. This came in the kit, these plates came with that kit. Uh, this kit actually, I forgot to mention, is from Art Morrison. It's a chromoly kit for an F-body car. Still gonna need some cutting and notching, which we'll go over, sorry for the camera. So anyways, this is the next plate that I've actually pre-cut and bent and you know made relief cuts in to get the bent portion of where I want it. Now the, the door bars are required to go up towards the firewall right before it turns up 
for this particular sanction type of a car and race. So uh, I've got that location here. So the, the forward bar will mount to this plate and come back at an angle towards us because we're sitting in this door well here. This plate, uh, you know, it fits pretty good. I'll probably tap it down a little bit and get that welded in, welded up the side. Again, there's a bunch of sealer in here, so I need to clean all that up. It's a smoky mess where, you know, if you're welding on stuff like this, you definitely wear masks, have good ventilation. Trying to get good light in here too is tricky, trying to get that welded into place. So that'll be the next one once I've got it in my exact location. I like it. And then I will mirror this exact same thing on the other side. So I haven't even started touching the bars yet. We'll go on to that here after I get the rest of these plates welded in at least the front half of the car. Okay, so I thought I'd go ahead and show this. I actually got the other side uh, welded in now. The light's gonna uh, do a bunch for me there. But it's all welded. So those two plates and, and that side is actually done. Now I'm on to the next side. This side is fresh. So what I did is I actually took a measurement off of the part of the door jam here. So right here, I'm mounting my plate about two inches back from where that seam in that door jam comes back and that's the front edge of where the plate's going to be. So I just took a couple marks and marked it out where I want to cut it, right? So once the seam's cut out, I'll, I'll probably sh I'll show you what it looks like once I get done and, and what I did on the other side, kind of the same thing to fill it. I've got the, using a lot of safety gear obviously, and then I've got two different types of cutoff wheels. I, I, I use the, you know, the grinder for a lot of it and I also use the angle grinder for that goes pretty quick. I like to use the smaller grinder mostly though, but you can see there's just all this sealer in here. You know, that I just have to dig out and clean up because that's what you're dealing with. You know, a lot of times there's sealer in here where the body pan meets the rocker as well, and this plate's gonna come down and just die right into that. So it's really hard to get that to stick well. Just so that's why you've just got to clean it up. And I was using wire brushes and whatnot on the other side, and I've got it pretty, pretty decent well considering the amount of porosity that I'm working with, but that's gonna be way better than through bolting it. You know, I don't actually even know if you have to fully weld these plates in or not. I like the idea of doing that just for rigidity, but if you're just through bolting it, heck, you'd be actually weakening it. So a lot of it's just to make sure the plate doesn't lift off. It can't come off because the, the, you know, the roll bar is gonna actually mount or you know, weld right to that plate, those plates. So we've got the forward plates, rear plates. I'm gonna do this side. We'll show you what it looks like next. Okay, real quick, I thought I'd show you what that looks like after I get that cut out of there. So this obviously is part of the seam that I cut out for the plate. You can see that it is hot, <laughs> um, but it leaves a gap, right? So this is the gap, this is what I was talking about. You know, these, these seams are pinch welded together, these unibody cars, and I wanna retain that structure. I just cut some structure, technically, a lot of structure. But anyways, I wanna go ahead and get this seam all welded up. So I'm gonna clean this off with a flapper disc, and I'm gonna have to TIG this. It's hard to MIG it. And MIG's a little bit of a mess just because there's, you know, this car's been painted, unfortunately. But it's one of those things where I'm trying to keep, you know, from burning the headliner up if possible. <laughs> and getting this in there correctly. So anyways, once this goes in, I'll go ahead and relief cut and bend it and, and weld it. Basically just mimic exactly what I did to the other side on this side. I'm not going to videotape any more on this process, at least on these front plates. I'm gonna go ahead and flip onto some hoop fitment next and show you what I'm gonna to do to fit the hoops after I go ahead and take care of the rest of these two plates. Okay, well, I'm ready to take a spin. <laughs> you know, it'd be so nice if when you go to build a car, you could just, you know, take it apart and then build it. That'd be really nice. You know, a lot of times you can cut corners and you pay the price. So you end up, when you put a car back together, you put it together, test fitment, take it apart, put it together, take it apart, different pieces. This hoop and this roll cage is especially with custom. This, roof, this hoop is a great example. This is a pre-made kit bent up, for the most part, for this type of car. Still has to be trimmed to fit. So I've put the back seat in, and I've temporarily put this seat in right now, mainly just to check my fitment of this main hoop. The plates are all welded in. The hoop is touching the headliner right now. It's, it's actually tight to the headliner. Now, I don't want that. I want at least a half inch clearance from that headliner. It's just gonna rub. The directions actually even say to go ahead and make sure you have a little clearance. But NHRA guidelines are gonna also determine whether this hoop can go. NHRA for this classification of racing, I've just read it. I don't memorize this stuff. <laughs> but it's uh, three inches, no more than three inches above your helmet, top of your helmet, and no lower. I think you can go higher, no lower. And then check that. <laughs> and but the back of the helmet as well, no further than six inches away. Now, if I use my hand as a guide, the hoop's just wedged in here right now. I haven't even cut it yet. It's 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 definitely within six inches. If anything, it's it's probably within four, which would work. The problem is if you got a taller person here, you know, I'm only about five nine and a half. <laughs> and 
six footer, six one, six two, that helmet, you know, that extra inch and a half or so on that helmet, it could definitely hit it. The other thing is it's back a little further than I want it because I want the clearance for the rear seat to be able to come out and, and also maybe even be able to put a kid back there, right? There's still, there's still gonna be a rear crossbar up high, it's still gonna be a knee knocker, but for a kid or something. Anyway, so I'm gonna push the rear of the hoop more this way, more towards the back of my head. Well, that's not good because it'll be too close. So I'm gonna tilt the bar back at a slight angle. That way I'm within my six inches of the back of my helmet. It's, it's, it'll be pulled, but it'll also be pulled down off the roof line or a good half an inch. Seats come back out again, make some cuts, test fit it again, put the seats back in, check my fitment. If I like it, I'm gonna put one tack at the bottom of the hoop down here on the plate, just one little tack, because that will kind of set the position of the main hoop and where I want it. After that, I need to fit my rear bars because the rear bars are the trickiest part. Some guys will cut holes in the floor so they can tack the upper side of the rear bar by pulling you know, the main hoop back or forward out of the way. I'm going to attempt to pull it forward after I get the rear bars set and fit. So first things first, I'll go ahead and tack, trim this up, test fit it again, tack fit, fit it where I like, and go from, the, go from there. We've got the rear bar fitment, which will be the next tricky thing, and, and I'll go over that a little bit and after I get this thing all chopped up and uh, exactly where I like it. Okay, I figure why not go ahead and show cutting this stuff. This is chromoly tubing. It cuts really in, from so far, like I said, this was earlier. This is the first time I've really used chromoly tubing, but it cuts just like regular steel. You know, you could use a cutoff wheel, you can use a porta band, bandsaw, grinders, whatever. <clears throat> I'm gonna use my bandsaw. So what I've done here, like I said earlier, I want to drop this hoop about half inch to three quarters of an inch and I want a slight kick back, right? So that means that the front side of the bar is going to be longer than the rear side, just slightly. And I'm talking about like probably less than 10 degree bend back when I kick that bar back. So I'm going to go ahead and run about a seven degree angle here. And what I'm going to do, it doesn't have to be perfect because I can always add, I can always take away a little more metal. I'd rather take away more than trying to add some. You can't add but it's more difficult. So anyways, I'm gonna go three quarters. Now I'm gonna go like a little more than that. I'm, I'm just gonna go about five eighths. I'm gonna go five eighths here. And on the back side, on this side, I'm gonna go about three quarters. That'll be close enough to 10 degrees. <laughs> it's gonna be, you know, a little tricky, obviously, to create the, what I'm after here with this sort of an angle. I'm just trying to get it slightly close to where I want it, and then I'll probably touch it up with a flapper disc just to get it perfect. So what some guys will do is actually put a piece of paper around it and cut it and make a template that way. You can do the same thing with notching. Now I have a tube notcher. I'll show you how that works a little later. Actually with this hoop, I'll put the crossbar on it uh, after I get it fit into place and I know exact height that I want that crossbar for the back bar. I'll probably weld that in on the bench. So I'll show a little bit of that next, but here's how it works cutting. And like I said, I'm gonna be going at a slight angle here. So that is about perfect what I wanted. So I can always, like I said, I'll probably end up touching this up slightly with the flapper wheel. I need to clean it anyways for a good weld. Cuts fast. That's a porta band, obviously, if they're really handy for something like this. Chromoly tubing for the same strength is actually has a thinner wall. So if anything, this cuts better than regular steel or faster than regular steel of the same strength, mainly for the thickness. So, so far so good. We'll get some test fitment done. Okay, so a couple test fitments with the seat in. It went great. Now we're on to the crossbar installation. It's just easier to weld when you're on a table, so I'm gonna weld the crossbar on the table. NHRI guidelines again, right? When you're seated in the car, the crossbar on your main hoop for this particular class of racing can be no higher than the top of your shoulders, no lower than four inches below the top of your shoulders. So there's gonna be a happy medium in here as well. So I, when I was in, in the car with the last test fitment, I sat in the seat, took the bar, made a mark where the top of my shoulders are at. I'm gonna come down about three inches or so. You know, that way a guy that's 5'6 to a guy that's 6'2 or so could rock this cage no problem. The other tricky thing I've done is I've actually clamped these to my table. That way when I weld the crossbar and mark my cuts for my crossbar, it's not gonna try and pull out or pull in on me. It's where it needs to be. 
Now, other thing that's kind of cool is tube notching. I went ahead and notched this side. Now the other side I'm gonna go ahead and notch and we'll video it and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so obviously I'm kind of spoiled here with the tube notcher and all this other stuff, right? You can grind these and you can cut these, you can swedge them. It actually takes a little longer and it's just not as tight of a fit. Because this is chrome, like if this was tube steel, I don't know if I'd bother with, with it or not, you know, for a few notches if it was regular steel. But since it's chromoly and I have to TIG it because it's chromoly, I really am going for a tight fit. Also, because I suck at TIG, I want to know, you know, I, I want almost no gap to have to worry about filling. I want to keep my TIGs as nice as possible, get a lot of, get a lot of uh, weld in there without having to try and mess around and fill, especially for exposed ones like this. So, I've got this mocked up in my Craigslist drill press here and I've got this tubing kit. This is a little cheap notcher from Harbor Freight. I test notched a piece ahead of time. It was actually off. I had to shim this part out slightly because ooh, you can actually see on one that I test cut. Oh, here, here's one I was playing with. Luckily, I had a couple extra bars in this kit that I didn't need because of the type of car, but anyways, I don't know if you're gonna see it on camera, but it was this part had way more of a notch than, you know, that side's wider and that side's skinnier. So you can see that that notch was not great. Obviously I was trying to bend it, I was playing around. That didn't work so well, by the way. So anyways, I've got it marked up. I actually cut the tube to length first. I marked about halfway center point from after this one was set in, I, I, and this was cut flat, halfway center on the bar, right? If this picture, this is the main hoop. I took the bar, coming across the crossbar, and I measured about halfway, and I cut the cross tube perfectly halfway. After that, notch that end. I've got this last end to notch. I slide to the notcher about halfway here, slightly less than halfway, just because I could always grind out more and I just want to get that fitment tight. At least that's what's working for me. This is set at zero, so I know that once this is clamped, this is a perfect 90 here. Now the other thing, obviously, is making sure that this one that's already notched is, is not rotated. So. You can kind of eyeball it and it's probably going to be close enough, but if you, if you really want to get crazy, you could stick a pipe in here into that notch and then put a level on it this way and make sure and you can you know, keep it loosely clamped over there and tighten it once you know this is perfectly perpendicular this direction so that your notches are perfectly lined up. All right, let's get to cutting this thing. I'll zoom in and we'll take a look at it. Okay, we'll go ahead and do this real time and I'll throw something on the screen there that if you want to bypass in the next section, we'll see how this works. So I'm just using a little bit of Krolls when I drill this. I've got the ventilation fans on. I'm running my drill press at 540. You can run it slower. You can probably run it a little faster, but I like to get these hole saws to last a little bit longer. You know, when it comes to hole saws, most times it doesn't really matter what brand you buy, as long as they're not complete Harbor Freight specials. Most of them are all the same. The last pretty good, as long as you don't bury them in there. So, oh, well we have to plug it in. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run this real time. Now I'm using an inch and three quarter hole saw, inch and three quarter pipe. do the work you don't want to force this thing through here let the bit just do the work and try and keep it cool a little bit of penetrating oil of some sort the only thing that's really left to do is just to clean it up so I'll show you what it looks like it comes out so what I'll do is take a little my little uh, grinding wheel the flapper disc and I'm gonna bevel this backside 
clean this, round these off, flatten these up a little bit, just to give me a, a better edge to weld to and get a lot of that slag out of there, but that's how quick it is. All right, I thought I'd go ahead and show what that looks like now that it's fitted up roughly where it needs to go. There's the first side. And so a couple things, I actually beveled the pipe a little bit this way as well. That way I get a nice solid bead. I also knocked the tip off of this bar here. And that allows also, that metal's too thin when it's way out here and I don't wanna have to take way up into here where that's really thin. So I knock it down where I get a little more weld right there so I get a really nice solid bead all, around, all the way around. And that is looking nice and tight. Here's the other side. Fitment is great. I mean, there's just like no wiggle room in there. Just enough to slide around. The tube, you can see the main hoop across the top here. It does it does want to kick out just slightly, and it will kick in just slightly. So I, again, I took a couple measurements. This was about 55 inches, but up above, it's about 54 and three quarters, 54 and seven eighths, something like that. Anyways, I brought it in just slightly. I want this to be slightly under 55 on this car, you know, more like 54 and three quarters, just to get a little bit of room mainly for the piece of trim you know picture if the bar is going to be welded to this plate right here eventually right there's a piece of rubber molding that goes along here too and if that bar's if that bar's super tight to that piece of trim that rubber molding in there you won't be able to get that rubber molding in or you'll have to notch it out so i want it to sit just inside of that again keeping clearance from the back of the seat and, and like I said, at that slight angle. So we'll get some TIG action next and I'll actually show what my TIGs look like because I get in a lot of trouble from some of my friends when they say, you don't show your welds, what's wrong with you? Okay, so I've done a little bit of practice welding here with my TIG, CK Worldwide Machine. So, you know, showing your welds is kind of like showing someone uh, in your bathing suit, in my opinion. A lot of guys grind down their welds and whatnot and I, don't get me wrong, I do too. I haven't TIG this stuff before and I haven't had a lot of experience on a TIG so I'm just practicing right now before I weld on the real hoop since these are going to be exposed I want to look halfway decent. Just to give you a heads up I'm using a 4130 uh, rod for welding this chromoly. Some guys prefer the ADS stuff and different things but the welding shop recommended it so that's what I'm doing. It's a 332nd rod and that is a number 8 collet and a number 8 tip on my TIG. Okay, kind of funny thing just happened. My TIG torch little controller just died on me so now I'm back to the foot pedal which will be very interesting later on when I'm inside the car. So we're going to go ahead and do a little test here with the camera to see if this actually shows up or not. You know, this is the best position you could possibly be in. I've got the table, I, I, I've got it exactly, you know, where I'm, I'm gonna want. I kinda, you know, good good rule of thumb whenever you're taking is to kinda trace it to make sure, okay, I can kinda follow it around. I'm, I'm doing this in steps as I, as I walk around the tubing to, to make sure my angles are perfect. In the car, it's gonna be a whole nother story. But let's see if this actually looks like anything on camera. I like to let it sit there for a minute to cool down. Well, I hope that worked out. If it did, that'll be cool. So that's the goal on every one. Okay, so this is for all my friends that want to see the welds. Now, I was probably going a little too slow. I could have went going a little faster, maybe a little more heat. But that is a, that's a pretty good weld. I'm happy with that. All right, real quick, I just thought I'd show a little bit of a reference here for the rear bars. Went ahead and, and, like I said, I tacked the main hoop in and we've got the two rear bars here. One has been modified where I'm going to put it into the car and the other one is how it came stock in the kit. You can see how much I cut off the end there. Uh, I believe these tubes are about six feet long with a bend in them. Did a, and, and basically how I got that dimension is I just in out, in out, in out with the bar until I liked it, kicked it to the side, and I went ahead and put a about a five uh, or eight degree kick in the tube notcher for that one side because the bars, when they come back from the main hoop on each side, they're actually kicked to the side 
just a little bit. And that's so I can mount them right onto the rear uh, subframe where the subframe goes. So I'll get this other one cut and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, it's really hard to explain and you'll probably be able to see it after I got these bars in the back, the rear bars in the back, but kind of have to see in 3D to understand what's going on here. Because this bar is kicking to the side, you know, if you got the main hoop, if we're looking at the back of the cage thing at the back of the car, you get the main hoop and you've got the two bars coming off the back, right? Well, since one's kicking this way, the other's kicking this way, the tube has to be angled how I have in the jig. <laughs> you know, the other tube is the opposite. It's the inverse of this. So instead of, you know, laying out this way towards me, I'm flip it, I flip the other tube the other way. It was going back the other way. And that means each tube is an inverse of the other. That angle's the same. For the most part, it's close enough. It's within a sixteenth or so, maybe a little more of an inch, eighth of an inch. Let little gap of weld perfect. It's fine. This side, I just want it to be the same. So I, I didn't change the angle on this. I left it the same. I just flipped the tube over and kind of the same deal, you know, a little less than half because that's the small side of the tube. That's the big side of the tube. And you can kind of see what I'm going for there. So we'll get that cut out. I won't bother showing it. We'll get these fit in. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go show that rear bar set up here. We've got, I went ahead and tacked them in and I've actually changed my mind on a few different things I've got here with how I'm going to weld the top hoop. So I went ahead and tacked those in. I just mirrored exactly what I did on each side to get those where I wanted them. Uh, you know, they come back through the rear of the car here. I kind of like, you know, some of it's just looks because the rear bars, from what I understand, there isn't really a requirement exactly what kind of angle they're at or how close or far they're at. They just need to tie into that rear subframe or frame if it's a full frame car or sandwich plates or welded plates. Went ahead and opened up the speaker boxes a little bit. They're actually cut open already. I just put them where I liked them coming down. So yeah, the overall, you know, you can kind of, I don't know if you're gonna see that horrible light, but got those tacked where I wanted. Now, originally I was gonna roll the front of the front, the main hoop forward to be able to get to the top of those. But I've got some really cool TIG, I don't know if that's gonna show up. Uh, I've got some really cool TIG tools that I'm getting to try out and play with here that I think will make it so I can get to it. Plus I've got just enough angle and gap on this thing that'll allow me to. But overall I'm really, really happy with you know, how those turn out. And then uh, what I was trying to explain before, you can kind of see how those bars, you know, on each side kind of come down at angles. And that's why I had a notch at that angle. It's, it, that's the hardest part of this is no cage is perfectly fit. You're going to have to fit it on your own. You're going to have to figure out what car you have, exactly where you want the seats, exactly what you want to clear. Most guys, for example, I went ahead and did the front tubes. Had to put a little kick in them. And the reason I'm running them the way I'm running them is because most guys on a car like this, an F body car, I'll go to the other side, they'll actually take out the door handle because that side hoop per NHRA rules, the way I understand them at least, you wanna check for sure, read them yourself, but they have to clear you between the shoulder and the elbow where that hoop comes across. And, and, and a lot of guys will kinda of come down, you know, and over. The problem is, is that door handle will not clear. So I went ahead and run them high, which is what the owner of the car wanted to do, and then down so it clears nice and it, it'll it'll cross them, you know, just above the elbow. No problem there, other than how in the heck are you supposed to get in and out of this car, right? This video is pretty much gonna stop here. I'm gonna do a second video update as soon as I get these door bars finished up. Right now everything's tacked, it's in a great location. Got the hoop kicked back to where I liked it. Sorry for that light, but that gives you an idea. Uh, you know, just really just starting to, to go ahead and tack these in. Let's see if we can get that TIG to focus. Did that work out okay? It doesn't want to focus, does it? Too much light. So anyway, so just tacked in. The forward bars, same thing. You've got that huge plates I've welded in down there and I gotta finish welding them. And because it would be a nightmare to get into this car. I mean, look at this. I mean, this this is gonna be a driver, right? This is gonna be a car my buddy wants to take around and, and just drive and take to the track and be legal. So I am going to put swing outs on this. I've actually convinced him to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a whole video just on kind of swing outs and then also some really cool TIG toys. For example, this is my new toy. I went ahead and I had a problem with my other style of amp control, remote amp control. You know, normally these are on your foot. I had a remote wheel style and, and you know, I didn't like it and I thought it wasn't working. I called CK, they were awesome, CK Worldwide, 
and they sent me a new, they, they took my old one back and sent me this style, which I am loving so far. The other really crazy thing that's on this torch is this end, right? It's, it's a clear cup and it's a, got a diffuser set up. And what that allows you to do is see how much stick out I have on that thing. They say you can run up to an inch and a half. You have to run a little higher gas pressure if you're gonna run it out that far. But what that's allowing me to do is get into some of these crazy, and I'm sorry for the focusing, some of those crazy crevices and, and areas where you wouldn't normally be able to get in very well with a TIG. And again, this is chromoly, we should be taking it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll do a video on the swing outs and I'm also gonna go into a little bit about the TIG I'm using a little more information on that and what's working for me. Again, I am not a professional welder. I've done it for a long time and I like it. It's a lot of fun. I've done a lot of MIG. I've always loved my MIG. But this TIG, I'm, it, this is forcing me to do more TIG than I've ever done before. So it's kind of interesting to try out these different techniques, these different tools. These tools are not cheap. If you're having a cage welded or trying to find someone to do it, it's going to be expensive if you don't do it yourself. This is part of the reasons why these tools are insanely expensive, but they're really, really nice. And it, 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 you just can't get into some of the locations like in the trunk, for example, when I was welding the rear bars in or tacking them, they're not fully welded yet. I was in the trunk on my side with my helm, you know, up inside there. It's like, how are you supposed to control a pedal? Some people can do it between their legs and they you know, have their hand on it and different things, but I don't know how you would do it without a remote. And, and that, that's kind of a new age thing. A lot of guys you're starting to see with the remotes and the diffusers and the gas lenses and different things, but I, I've just seen them online. I've never actually had one myself. So it's been a lot of fun. So all I can say is, hey, if you like this video, I'll hit like or subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.